guys, I'm Engsel and welcome back. This time we're going to talk about Green Arrow Annual number two. I didn't know this was a No Justice tie-in when I first started reading it, uh, even though it was there on the cover. Uh, I realized a little later I didn't see it. And it's funny to me because not so long ago I was recording my review of the finale of No Justice. And I was saying, hey, this story could have benefited from a tying. Maybe it would have been better to have an extra issue where we could see something else. And I did my focus um, particularly on how the villains decided to be more like heroes on that story. And here we are, we have a tie-in that doesn't do any of that. Uh, this tie-in doesn't really expand on the No Justice story. Uh, and it is actually a prequel of sorts to uh, to how did Oli get to where Amanda Waller was at the beginning of the No Justice storyline. We just took it for granted, we just accepted it. Hey, Green Arrow is over there. How did he get here? Who knows? This Green Arrow, he's Oli. Uh, well, he doesn't have money right now, actually. But hey, he got there some, somehow. Um, it was not really interesting to know how he got there, but hey, now we know. But I'm not saying that I'm disappointed by this, because even if a satayin, it failed somewhat, it was a very beautiful green arrow issue. Because everything else uh, that happened had to do with Oli doing his best to be a hero in his own particular way. Uh, which is a little unorthodox sometimes, but he was doing his best to save people, to try to save the day, to try to find his colleagues, to try to, uh, to try to, sorry, <laughs> to try to uh, find out what the hell is going on. We see a lot of him just improvising on the fly. We see a lot of him shooting arrows, trick arrows everywhere. We kind of see him fighting against a version of the Justice League and overcoming it, albeit it was only on a spread page, I would like to see more of that fight, because uh, we know, I mean, at least Green Arrow fans, we know that he is good with his arrow, uh, uh, with his bow and arrows. Uh, he is actually very skilled, but we rarely see him doing something spectacular. And here we had the opportunity to see him in just going for a few pages. But anyway, the rest of the issue was pretty cool in showing and showcasing how much of a good person he is, even though he has a personality that sometimes gets on everybody's nerves. Um, what we see a little more of is this particular teaser at the end of No Justice, where all is entrusted with certain thing that is kind of a callback to a certain storyline in the Justice League of America, uh, the, the run done by Morrison, which was adapted in an animated movie. I think I gave you no hints by now. Uh, so how will Oli use it? Uh, the issue ends up by saying that this will be revealed in August, so we still have a few weeks before that. But I hope it is done well because uh, I really like Oli in he has been well implemented since Rebirth began because before that the new 52 version uh, leaving aside some part of Remender's run it was uh, sorry uh, Lemire's run it was extremely <laughs> extremely bad um, but well I have fun with this oh the art the art I have to say the art was pretty cool I really liked it there were some paneling choices here and there that really enriched the experience and the particular moments that I was reading at that time. So I'm going to give this uh, three goatees out of five because it was actually very entertaining. So I recommend it, if nothing uh, else, um, than seeing only do awesome things and being a nice hero. So what did you think? Uh, Click the like button if you think Amanda Waller is not very a very good person. And I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you much for watching.